Hey, Doug. Hello, Sean. Okay, so you wanted to talk today about um, purchasing power and people that maybe haven't considered buying a home that could. Yeah, so let's uh, start off with maybe the topic today. Okay. Should I buy a home now? Uh -huh. And the answer is yes, if uh -huh. you have the right job so you can qualify. And if you need a mortgage, which most you need a mortgage, which most people do. Okay. So, and why? Number one is the prices are historically really low. Okay. And some people say, "Well, do you think they're going to come down?" It's always hard to tell where there's a spike in prices. A lot of people missed a spike and didn't sell in time. Uh huh. Now we're down near the trough, and so it's really hard to predict where that bottom is. Okay. But if you mix the prices that we have now with the interest rates on a mortgage we have now, that is kind of like the combination for what we call the, I will call it the perfect storm or maybe the perfect day Okay. to buy a home. And a lot of people that we run across in our real estate business here in St. Paul, Minneapolis, Minnesota is that they think they don't earn enough money to buy a home. And that's the point of today's little video right because even like even four or five years ago uh people used to think well like the minimum i could buy a townhouse for in the cities for example is like 150,000 125,000 and um interest rates were a lot higher yep four or five years ago oh yeah so now things have kind of turned yes uh, for buyers like that and so we've got some examples on the board here, so let's just talk about them. Go ahead. Let's say you find a uh, home, a single family home, for $150,000. Okay. And um, the mortgage company is going to go look at your income, and we figured it out that if you're earning approximately $9.10 per hour, you and your co mortgager, a partner, a wife, or a spouse, uh, or a partner to buy the house, you need to earn $9.10 per hour, add those two together, so you're at $18.20 per hour for a combined income for both people to qualify for a mortgage with normal debt load, normal okay. debts. If you've got a double income household, double income in household and you're each earning at least $9 an hour, yep. you potentially qualify. You potentially qualify for the $150,000 home, and we figured this at a rate of 4.625 and an and a APR of um, 4.875, but this is the actual rate that you would pay on the loan. Which is kind of part of the kicker of what makes this all kind of possible. Right. Is, I mean, I can remember when I got a loan when I bought my first house, I mean, it was awesome that rates were at seven and a quarter percent. You and Barb have been mm -hmm. through rates in the early 80s that were up to what? Were they? 17 percent. 17 percent. I think some of them went yeah. up to 20 percent. So, this is really the part that most people haven't paid a lot of attention to. Yeah. I did hear that uh, since Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have tracked interest rate averages, it's the lowest in recorded history. They started recording those in 1971. Yeah. Well, I remember so, when, I, when I bought my first house way back in the 70s, mm -hmm. my dad told me, oh boy, you're going to have to pay 8 or 10% for your mortgage. Uh -huh. And everybody thought that was common. Well, look where we are now, folks. <laughs> Right. Okay. So okay. now let's take the let's take an ex another example. Two hundred thousand dollars. You need to earn twelve dollars and eleven cents per hour. Is all you need to earn, and then combine that with another partner, and so it's about twenty four dollars an hour combined income um, for a full time job with regular debt load. Again, mm -hmm. the same scenario on interest rates. <clears throat> so, okay. um, excuse me. I'm going to step off the screen just a minute because some people have asked me. Well, Doug, you know what? what yeah, you can find some houses. Well, I just I just went in in our uh, little search here in our um, our multiple listing service, and I found a house right here that's located on um, in Blaine on Polk Street for two hundred thousand dollars. There you go. Doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it. I just pulled it up as an example. Yeah, these examples of prices. Yeah. I would say are very. Yeah, and here's a single family specific. home in the city of St. Paul on Kent Street for one forty nine nine. Okay. So these these um, properties are there. They're single family homes. You can find higher, of course, and lower. Mm -hmm. And um, 
So there you go. I think if you if you aren't in the market for a house, you might know somebody else that is that's maybe earning this amount of money, and you should talk to them about investigating buying a home and getting pre-qualified for the mortgage, and then see if they can come up with these levels. And then some people will also tell us, um, oh, oh, I need some cash to buy a home. And that's what our topic of our next video is going to be okay. is how can, what do I need for cash for down payment and other costs to buy a home? And you'll simply be amazed at what's out there right now for people to be able to buy a home to help you get the right. cash available uh, that's need, uh, the cash that's needed. And there is cash available out there. Yeah, I think for me, because there's, there's the down payment and there's grant programs out there for certain areas or um, certain types of properties. To me, this was just the real uh, surprising thing when we worked it out on a per hour basis. Right. How little, because you think, you know, I'm going to buy a $150,000 house. I'm going to need, like, all this money. I'm going to have to have, you know, a pretty right. big paying job or something like that. But if you're both, you know, if you're both working or if you've just got one worker, one outside worker in the household who's, you know, <laughs> making 18 bucks an hour... I mean, I mean, you can buy houses for less than these prices, oh, yeah. especially if you're willing to fix yeah. some of them yeah. up. And this example was to be probably on the higher side. I've right. read a lot of people thinking about buying, their, especially their first home. Mm -hmm. But even if you've been out of the market or you're thinking about selling your $125,000 town home and moving up a $200,000 family home, okay. uh, single family home. So anyways, it's information that you should consider. Talk about uh, it with your family, um, with your coworkers. And let's get, let's get out there and take a look and see if more people can buy a home that are just waiting on the sidelines and just thinking they can't. Right. And that's the purpose of today's um, discussion. All right. Thanks, Doug. Okay, Appreciate sure. it. Thank you. Yeah.